before we go ahead and jump into evaluating limits of functions of two variables, we need to first establish some limit laws. And many of these are going to look familiar from single variable calculus. So to begin, we have limits of constants and linear functions. So here we want to go ahead and let a, b, and c be scalars. There are any real numbers our little hearts desire. So our first rule is the constant function rule, which is the same as single variable calculus. So here we say that if if a function f of x, y is equal to some constant c, then the limit as x, y approaches that point x naught, y naught, our fixed point, and this is of a constant, so we have the limit of the constant, that's going to be equal to the constant c. Right, so that's the same exact rule that we know from single variable calculus. The same holds true with functions of two variables. So the next one is our first linear function rule. So here, let's say if a function f of x, y is equal to x, then the following holds. So then we have the limit as the point x, y approaches that point x naught, y naught of x. What do you think this is going to equal? x naught we're only evaluating in terms of our variable x. So similarly, our second linear function rule is if f of x, y is defined as y. Well then, the limit as the point x, y approaches that fixed point x naught, y naught of y, our function, this is going to be equal to y naught. So these two linear function rules are very similar to evaluating single variable functions. The following or more generalized limit laws of functions of two variables, and again, we are going to see similarities to what we already know from single variable calculus. So to begin here, we want to let C, L, and M be any real number we want, and we're going to let n and m, little m, be integers. We also want to go ahead and let the limit as p approaches p naught of the function f be equal to l. And we want to let the limit as p approaches p naught of the function g of x, y be equal to m. So here we go. Our first rule is the constant multiple rule. So if you have the limit as point p approaches point p naught of a function f that has a scalar multiple c, then just like single variable calculus, we can pull that constant c to the outside of the limit. Again, that's still the limit as p approaches p naught of f of x, y. So this will be equal to c multiplied by l, the limit of f. The next limit law is the sum or difference rule. So let's suppose we have the limit as point P approaches point P naught of some function f of x, y plus or minus some function g of x, y. So because both limits exist, we could separate this out to the limit as point P approaches point P naught of that function f of x, y, plus or minus the limit as point p approaches point p naught of g of x, y. So we've separated that sum or difference to two separate limits, and now we can evaluate the two smaller pieces and say that this is, of course, equivalent to the limit l plus or minus that limit m. And keep in mind here that all of these rules are existing because we have made the assumption that these limits exist. So just be mindful of that as we continue. So with that in mind, we have our next rule, the product rule. 
So let's suppose that we have the limit as a point P approaches a point P naught of the product of two functions, say f of x, y, multiplied by the function g of x, y. So because both limits are existing, we could separate this to the prod or two separate limits being multiplied together. We have the limit as p approaches p naught of the function f of x, y, and this is multiplied now by the limit of the function g of x, y as p approaches p naught. And again, because both limits exist, we can now evaluate and say that this is going to be equal to L multiplied by M. And we have two more rules here. Our next rule is the quotient rule for limit laws of functions with two variables. So let's suppose that we have the limit as P approaches P naught of the quotient F of X, Y divided by g of x, y. Now, keeping in mind that both of these limits exist, we can say that this is equal to the limit of the function f, which is l, by the limit of the function g of x, y, which we know to be capital M. Now, this is, of course, such that m cannot be equal to 0. And last but not least, we have the rational powers rule. So as we begin here, I want you to note that for those integers, little n and little m, these have no common factors. So n and m have no common factors here. So with that in mind, let's suppose that we have the limit as a point P approaches point P naught of, so we have a function f of x, y raised to the power m by n. So because the limit of the function f exists and these integers n and m have no common factors, then we can simply think of this as the limit l raised to the power of m by n. And here we have some restrictions. We want to keep in mind that this is such that n cannot be equal to 0. We also want to make a note here that n is an even integer. So n is equal to 2k, where k is some integer value. Right, so n is an even integer. And the last restriction here is that the limit of the function f, so l, must be greater than 0. So now that we have looked at all of these limit laws and we've seen how they're analogous to what we know from single variable calculus, we are officially ready to start evaluating some limits. So here we go.